Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. What, what up, dude? Yeah, what up? Um. What up? <laughs> so, um, uh, happy, uh, happy birthday again. Uh, I don't know exactly what day it was, but happy birthday, man. Yeah, the 12th of April. Okay, a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome. Um, yeah. So, as I did with everybody, uh, really quick, tell me uh, if you wouldn't mind your league, your race, and just like a little tiny analysis or overview of kind of your preferred styles of play. Uh, yeah, of course. So, um, um, so well, um, but first of all, I'm uh, from Germany, so if I stumble sometimes, or I need the time to dude, find my words. Take your time, man. <laughs> no rush. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, okay, so um, I started um, serious lettering in, uh, I guess, November or December, and uh, with your Bronze City GM build, it's uh, my main uh, focus. Um, I'm playing with Zerg. And nice. Yeah, uh, actually, I started with. Um, well, I started with Zerg, then I brought all three races into Plat 3, and now I'm focusing on Zerg again. Nice. Um, so, well, yeah, the general game plan is. Um, yeah. Your, your current bronze city GM build, um, okay. getting the 85 drones and max with hydras the first time and see how it goes from there. Nice, that, that sounds good. Perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy you chose Zerg. You came back to Zerg. If you're going to be like, I've actually switched to Terran, I'd be like, oh man. Yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> I'd be like, lesson number one, fucking play a different race. No. <laughs> No, they, uh, all right, sounds good, dude. Um, so I'm assuming since you're from Germany, all your games are going to be played on Europe. So this is going to be. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll hop over to Europe. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll also copy the replays to the uh, US server. So. Oh, you did? Uh, like yeah. either either way, we we just do it on Europe just to make it easy. Okay. It's fine. Okay. All right, so I am on Europe, and I'll give you my details really fast, just so you can okay. quickly add me. Okay, there's me, and then uh, yeah, uh, whenever you add me, we can just jump into it. Basically, we'll uh, we'll be talking a lot about you know, um, if you if you're doing kind of like B to GM styles, we'll definitely talk about like ways that you may or may not be like keeping up to with what should be happening. Like one of the one of the biggest ones that uh, most people will always struggle with is actually spinning the larva appropriately. Like they'll always skip bits of the larva here and there, like, you know, get distracted by things or prioritize other things. I mean, we'll see, we'll see a lot about, like, we'll just definitely try to clean your build up to make sure it's up to par. And then, um, decision making of like how you send your army out is, de is definitely gonna be a big part of it too. No. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the first minutes I, I feel kind of, um, yeah, confident, I would say. And yeah, I watched, um, there were some the coaching lessons, uh, coaching lessons um, recently, so um, I, I refined um, some bits of it. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, I think I sent you the replay, uh, the invite. Did you? Uh, there we go. Got it. Blade Runner. Nice. Yeah. Correct. All right. I will make you the. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I invited you. I just fucking kicked you out immediately. I right, get out of my party. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I made you leader. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I would uh, like to start with um, versus Protoss. Okay. Um, because I think that's my, that's my weakest matchup. I think I have a win rate of twenty eight percent or so. Sure. So um, main issue is um, there that I uh, I think I max out too too late and then I run into already uh, also maxed out Protoss army or Skytoss and or something like this um, yeah in this game I uh, yeah run into a Protoss with uh, I don't know eight Templars and got stormed or <laughs> yeah 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 that's flight. like the, the the classic death ball <laughs> you're like okay yeah. well this is just de like literally death walking around yeah. the map um, uh, so uh, currently I'm uh, plat two uh, I think I didn't say that. Uh, okay, yeah. it's, it's all good. Um, so, like, I think a big part about it is going to be uh, 
trying to avoid letting Protoss get to that point, it's that's definitely going to yeah. be like uh, one of the main goals here. Because if the Protoss does have the money to be like, I have a ton of carriers and some Archons and like eight Templar and a mothership, and it's just like maxed army, that definitely means something went wrong for you in the early game. Because uh, that's ex so expensive to do that for Protoss. Uh, but yeah, as always, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if you've how if you've heard me say this before in previous lessons, but if I'm ever in the like mid sentence or talking about something and you have an idea in your mind that you don't want to like let slip and you really want to ask it, by all means, feel free. to You can totally yeah. interrupt me, say whatever you want, at whatever you want, because uh, you know obviously it's for you and I want you to get the most out of it. No. Um, and then really quickly before we really start into this, did you want to do? Because our lesson's going to be longer than normal. We're doing ninety minutes. Uh, did you want to do? Um, more matchups than one, or did you want to focus really heavily on ZVP? Um, yeah, maybe uh, ZVP and ZVT. Um, I have a, a second replay. Okay, so I'll uh, probably two. Focus on two and. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. I just won't. I won't go. Like I'm. I will. I'll kind of keep tab on the time then, and I won't make. If like we're going kind of like long term here, I'll you know switch over to you know we'll speed it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Anyways, um, just straight up, ZVP, uh, you know, su something super standard. Definitely always be going for that 16 hatch if you can. And always at this point in time, your drones are already kind of doing it. Only one patch is not being mined properly, but yeah, stack those close patches. It's... No, I, <laughs> I tried to know just a little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so good. Yeah, uh, I tried to do it, um, uh, but then sometimes I... Miss like the yeah like this. I'm sending the drone out a little bit too late. Uh, yeah, that that, so, that that was mostly fine. You're you're late by like literally like one second, so it wasn't that bad. Okay. Uh, as long as you're not late by like too long, like you you get because you do gotta think to yourself like every second you are late is another second that you have a chance of being blocked by the probe. And if that probe yeah, blocks you, it, you, you're just like fuck my life. <laughs> yeah, <I have laughs> sucks. <it. laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean it's okay. You got it down, so it's fine. Um. But yeah, uh, I would say the perfect time to send your drone out, if you're ever curious, if you go for a 16 hatch, just rip a drone off your mineral line at like 190 minerals. And then you're going to get right on top of that spot of your uh, of your natural right about the time you hit 300. Yeah. Uh, and then if you go for a 17 hatch, rip one of your drones in an egg, actually. Don't even pull a drone off the mineral line. Just send one of the egg drones that's uh, when you build two at the same time, right after the overlord uh, pops out which is drones 15 and 16. And then you'll build another drone to go up to 17. But if you send one of the 15 or 16 drones that are timed exactly the same, those that will time it perfectly to make a hatchery for a 17 hatch. Then that's what I think you should do against Terran. We'll talk about that later, though. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And then your overlord placement defensively fucking perfect. I, it's really good. Um, and I, okay, that's even better. I really like that you follow the probe. You always need to do this. Always. Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. And then turning it around again. Perfect. Okay, so your defensive overlord is on point. That's that's perfect. Uh, very, very good. Your uh, first overlord, I would say, is fine. On the, you should totally go towards the ramp, just like how you are. This map is one of the awkward ones, though, just because it's a different design. It's like, when you, you, you don't actually go to the natural first, where... Just like you know, that's how the map is set up. This map and purity and industry are the only, are the only ones that are like this, where it's like either tied, like they're you can just choose one, or the main's actually closer. So on this map, what you should do, always, well, I mean, we'll see if you do it in a second here, but you should always go to the ramp first, still again, uh, just to kind of like see how the setup is, and then go up actually, just to see his ramp. You'll always see the nexus if you go to the ramp. Uh, but you, but you want to? Yeah. Sorry, I'm saying this really weird. I said ramp two times, and I mean two different ramps. So go to the ramp first that's between his main and his natural, just like you are now. But then once it's there, go north to the natural ramp that goes down, and then just kind of see if his wall's there, and it should be. And then you'll see a lot of stuff, and then you immediately turn around and go back into his main. Uh, just because, again, this map has a weird layout, so it's it, ca it requires weird scouting path, like a weird scouting pattern. Um... Because also, if you take if you go all the way to the natural ramp first and you just wait on it, like if you send it there really high at first, you're gonna get a read on. You'll still get a read on his wall a little bit faster, but you you what you will get though is a read on his natural a little bit slower, 
because your overlord's going at like an angle rather than straight. So yeah, like going seeing the nexus is the main priority. Like if he did expand, you know you're fine. Like you know you're not getting proxy forgated basically. And if you see there's no expansion, then that's like cause for concern. And then if you furthermore see no wall in, then you're like, yep, okay, we need to start making some fucking links because I'm gonna die. So I'll watch Overlord here for a second. I just see how it moves. Yeah, perfect. Okay, per yeah, fucking perfect. Okay, yeah, per exactly what I wanted you to do. You, uh, you give because again, you give yourself the fastest scout on the natural. So that's perfect. And then you perfect, you scout in the main. Your scouting is gr like I, I have nothing more to teach you with your Overlord scouting. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. The the, the only thing is the first minutes. I think it's um. Yeah, solid, but then, uh, yeah. later, uh, I forget the, the five minutes scout or something like this. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's the last thing I was going to say, is you definitely need to follow up a scout a little bit later on, just to kind of get a read, if you haven't yet gotten one. Because, I mean, the fact that he showed you, here, here's the thing, check this out. Uh, I'm going to go back really fast, and I'm going to show you something. Da, da, da. I want to see when you're, right when your overlord gets shot. So, you made four lings right as the pool is done, it looks like. Um, you actually... Uh, you know what? I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna critique it. It's fine against Protoss. Like you don't know if they're gonna go adept first or not. But if your Overlord gets shot, like, but here's the thing. This is what I was gonna say. But again, this is kind of you. You don't have to take this information to heart. I do this in my own games. But here it is. If you get shot by a Stalker like this, really fast, it means he opens Stalker first. And if he opens Stalker first, you don't actually need Zerglings. You can make drones. Okay. Um. um. So if that ever happens to you, if you if you haven't made lings yet and he goes stalker first, you can actually make lings later and make drones first. Like you can make, we're talking like you could make lings when you're at like 34 drones or like 33 drones. Because if he goes stalker adept adept, which is what some people do, it means he's trying to hide his tech, which is going to happen a little bit. But then also the trade-off is is be, for him to hide his tech, you you get a greedier opener. So it's something you can do if you want to. It's it gives you. It's not like gonna be, like oh my god, it's the difference between winning and losing. But it it will give you a little bit of an edge though early game. Then also applied the. Um, I don't know if it did it this game, um, but I leave uh, twenty drones on mineral, and then build my gas. I think I adjusted this um, recently, and I think it. I also feel a little bit. Uh, more minerals to spend. Um, so I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, I I'm look, I'm gonna look at your build again. I'm gonna look at it more closely now. We because I really wanted to talk about your scouting just to like see if you can get reads and stuff. And uh, I would say the the final thing is definitely try to get an, another overlord in there sooner than later. Uh, if you can, like it, it will probably die. But try to see what tech he's gonna go for, and that would give you a lot of information as to like possibly what you're gonna be up against, whether it be Stargate or Robo or something. But your build. We'll talk about your build. Your first gas. Let me see your first gas. Your first gas is fine. Okay, I just want to make sure you're not building it before you're like ripping drones off of 16. So your first gas is great. Perfect. Your pull time is fine. Your second and third gases were a little off though. Uh, for, for just from what I saw, it, look, it looked like it was too early. Yeah, I tried to um, actually to do the, the road drone and. and um first when the, the mineral line so the natural is fully saturated yeah uh and i would um so you the timing to throw down your roach warren i'm gonna see how you do it but the timing to throw down to be perfect is right after you spend your first injective larva and th there you go you, I, was gonna, you, I was gonna say make sure you fix your main but you you just did so that's fine okay so your layer started that is fine because again this is be the gm style your roach warren should not be started yet uh, you're again, you're, and your third queen has started, which is great. You're still making drones and overlords. Um, you will, it looks like you will supply block here, which might be why. Okay, this, like, this Roach Warren's way too early. Uh, it needs to, you need, uh, throw it down. Like, throwing it down in basically probably like 15 to, probably more like 20 seconds from now would be perfect. Because the the goal like a roach warren itself builds in 40 or in, uh, sorry in 39 seconds and a layer builds in 57 seconds and the goal is is you want to time those pretty similar together and it's okay if the roach warren's like a few seconds late or if the hatchery is a few seconds early like it doesn't like if it's just like five within five seconds off from being perfect of each other that's not a big deal the biggest deal is 
you just really want to make sure your larva is never going to be just kind of sitting there. And this is going to now cause that for sure to happen because it's impossible to afford a third queen and a roach horn this fast. And also spend all your larva. So that... that oh, whoop, oh, should I just uh, spend it up? That roach horn cost should have actually been an overlord and a drone. And then that over, if that overlord popped out, you know, before this inject pops off, you would not larva cap. And then you could make another round of like eight drones and then you make the warren. Because if you look at this, watch your, hit uh, U for just, just look at your units and watch your larva. It's going to go up to like six and it's going to sit there for a little bit. Or like eight. Okay, it's at seven and it's sitting there. You never want that to happen. That is painful for Zerg when that happens. And it's only because your Roach Warren's too early. Uh, your gases actually would have been fine. The timing of your gases would have actually been fine if you had spent your larva. If you had been able to spend your larva. So just just know, uh, yeah, you, you want to take your gases roughly around the time when your natural is like half to like two thirds saturated. Uh, but this is assuming you're still cr like cranking your drones out, right? Like you're not letting larva sit there. You have to do that. And then um, your roach warren always gets made as soon as you spend your larva from your first inject popping off. Yeah, that was like, uh, probably like 35 seconds of larva cap, which is super rough. It, it, make, it just puts your build so much further behind. Uh, and then now, anyways, you have a roach speed started. You're taking your third right around the time when you start making roaches. This is perfect. Uh, your third queen is just pumping tumors out like a machine. The rest of it looks fine. It's, yeah, you like your, your, just your timing of your, your first little bit there of larva was definitely going to... Screw your build up a bit though. Uh, and then uh, just make sure to... I, I, I know it sounds really minor, but it actually is pretty decent when it adds up over time. Just make sure as well you don't have anything happening like what's going on in your main where you're missing a drone. Like that will definitely... Like if that, if that, if that only happens for like 5 to 10 seconds, it's pretty insignificant. You won't even realize pretty much. But if we're talking you're missing a drone for like 3 minutes, that's actually... Uh, a lot of minerals that you're missing because if you think about it like this one drone practically mines one mineral like the, every worker does this every worker in starcraft 2 mines practically one mineral per second because it takes usually about five seconds for them to do a round and then do another round and do another round and it's always a five mineral turn in so if we're talking three minutes has been missed that's like 180 minerals that is now also missed and 180 minerals just from one drone being gone for a couple a few minutes is quite significant that's actually like you can afford quite a few things with that uh so it, and then every minute that goes by it's another 60 minerals and another 60 minerals and it does add up pretty fast because it uh you know it delays everything else you could do as well uh faster which could also speed everything else up faster Evolution complete. all right and then your production, you're starting to make drones again a little bit. Uh, I do think your hydrogen is a little, a tad bit too early. Uh, only in the sense that, it, again, um, I'm going to go back and look at your larva right when you take the hydrogen. So you have six larva right now, chilling. Throw it on the hydrogen. So, okay, your hydrogen's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll say this again. You're, like, I'm not going to make it super, sound super confusing because your hydrogen's actually okay. And so is your Evo Chamber. It's just that you're not spinning your larva as fast as you should be. That's the only thing. It's it's going back to that 5SD, 5SD, 5SD thing again, right? <laughs> where it's like you just... Like, you have to... Like, if you, if you... Yeah, if you just make it a muscle memory where... Like, it's like, honestly, you turn making drones into, like, breathing. Like, you don't, you don't even think about it. You, your hand just does it. And every time you're thinking about something else, you're just still 5SDing your ass off because your hand is just, that's what it does. Like, that's what needs to happen because I want you to try to make drones even when there are no larvae on the hatchery. Like, just keep trying. And then also obviously keep, maybe keep an eye in top right. Like, have your eyes kind of rotate from like the, the middle of the screen to like the bottom middle to look at your, your production of stuff. And then in top right, like glance up there just to make sure you're not getting supply blocked if you can. But then just the whole time when you're not doing anything, 5SD, 5SD, 5SD. And it's like, even if it takes four rounds of hitting 5SD and then finally on the fifth one, a drone actually gets made. That's still worth it because if you actually make a drone the second the larva is ready every time, you're 
your your build is just going to like cruise and you're going to max out super fast whereas if you ever you know if you're if you're making drones when you think you can make them but you're not doing anything in the meantime there's definitely going to be times they're going to be like oh yeah make drones and there's two larvae sitting on every hatchery and you're like oh yeah make drones and an inject popped off 10 seconds ago and now the hatcheries have been larva capped for the last 10 seconds and you're like okay time to make drones again because you're just coming back to it over and over but if you do it constantly that'll never happen to you and you don't you don't have to do it all game either it's just until you saturate three bases and then it's over and then that phase of the game is done And then it becomes 5SR, 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 5SH. <laughs> Alright, so I like that you're getting a scout off of, uh, it, I would say the scout is a little late, but you're still, you are still getting it. And you can see a guy going for, uh, you don't know if he opened up Robo or Council, but I will say, if he already has Immortals, it's most likely he opened up Robo. It's just, it makes the most sense. Because usually if a Protoss opens up Council, they'll usually open up with a Warp Prism because it's going to be some type of pressure with it, whether it be Blink Stalker, Adepts, Charge Lots. But if he opens up with Immortals and he's not making a Prism, it means he probably opened up with a Robo first and he just wants power in his army. Uh, and the, the Council can always come later to complement Immortals. This Double Forge uh, is definitely a commitment here from Protoss. Um, that's... You know, obviously, you don't know if he's going to go for shields or armor, but he's definitely going to get weapons as one of those. That's definitely insinuating the Protoss does not want to do a timing really fast. He instead wants to probably play for like a third base at the very least. Like this guarantees he's not doing a two base timing. It's very unlikely. Um, so uh, that's that's reinforcement for you to feel safe right now making drones as fast as you can. Um, and ideally, you would already be fully saturated on your three bases at this point. Like I would say if we're at 630 pretty much. And you still aren't fully saturated on your third base. You're definitely behind. You should be fully saturated on your third by probably six minutes. Uh, like, right around six minutes. Um, maybe a little bit faster if, you, if you're, if you you know, just doing an amazing job. Maybe, uh, like, five to ten seconds after six minutes if you're, you know, lacking a little bit, if you're slowing down. But if we're talking, like, 6.30 and you're, you still got a ways to go, your build's definitely struggled in some way, shape, or form. And we've talked about a lot of ways it has already. Uh, but, yeah, your build's probably, like, a full minute behind right now. Because uh, I imagine you're not, you're, from the way it looks, you're probably not going to be fully saturated on your third until about 7 to 7.15. If you make drones non-stop from now. Your amount of roaches you made is fine. Your amount of lings you made is fine. That's no problem there. Um, the spores that you made is not super necessary, but... But again, if you if you are if you're feeling unsafe or you're feeling unsure about what's going on, I'm never gonna say don't do that. If you're if you don't know what he's doing and you just want to be safe about it, it's okay. Uh, but ideally, obviously, you want to get that scout off a little earlier with you know your follow up scout to know if he's going Stargate or not. Um, and um, yeah, I try to um, build some. Or I, sometimes I build uh, with his Protoss and Terran. I build some extra queens. Yeah. Because I think um, it takes a little, sometimes it takes a little bit too long um, until the hydras are out, and uh, with upgrades, so I sometimes uh, then set a uh, bit like um, two or three extra queens. Yeah, because you're talking, um, you're talking about if they like open up with like an area unit to harass you. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, ideally, uh, even, like here, here's how I'll answer this. If a guy opens up with a really fast air unit, let's say he opens up with like a Banshee or a Oracle, which is the only thing that could really be, or maybe like one Void Ray. Those are the only things that could really harass you that fast. If, you're, if your build's on point and it's playing, you know, as efficiently as you can, there's not going to be like a Battlecruiser in your base, like really, really, really fast. Uh, like a Battlecruiser would come much later. A, a, a Battlecruiser would hit your base by like a fast Battlecruiser build would be like five minutes, 30 to six minutes. And if we're talking six minutes that's when you're already fully saturated right that's ideally so if if we're talking like something that's gonna hit you really early when you your third hasn't even started yet the only thing it'll be is for Terran a banshee or maybe like a raven or something you can make right away a liberator uh for protoss it would be again like an, a void ray or an oracle or one phoenix or two phoenix or something and if you just take your three queens and you tell your creep queen at that point to just go reinforce the queen that's being attacked 
you can beat any one of those air units right off the bat. Two queens can beat a void. Two queens can beat a banshee. The, I guess a banshee if I had cloak would be the only problem here. But a cloaked banshee also takes a little bit longer. And here's the thing about this build. If you're doing B to GM build, the layer is so fast that you can get an overseer against any cloak rush in the game. Be it DTs, cloak banshees, burrow things from Zerg. It doesn't matter what it is. That overseer access is going to be there so fast that you don't actually need detection from a spore. If, I but again... <laughs> yeah, you, like you don't even need them at all unless you know, unless for sure you know. Like if it is a starport, I would, I'd be like, yeah, it's totally fine that you made a spore. I don't care. That's that's cool. Like if it if it actually was a banshee or if it actually was an oracle, I'm not gonna say don't build a spore then because you know it is that. But if you make spores against somebody who doesn't go for a stargate or a starport like every single time, it that's that is another thing that will slow your build down uh, earlier and will delay you from like that six minute saturation. And I'm just trying to I'm I'm trying to reinforce your mindset that if you did want to make blind spores, I would say it's probably appropriate to make them around five minutes, when you should have a very high drone count. But let's see when you made them. And I'll, this this is the point I'm trying to make I, uh, to make this sound clear. You're making spores blindly at at like 3:40 is your first spore. This is before you're fully saturated on the natural. This is definitely too early. The only thing that could be attacking you right now from Protoss would be if he like proxy stargated you and an oracle flew to your base and at that point what you should do instead a, a great way to, d to deal with this would be what if you just took your overlords okay and like we're talking like overlord not first at one and two but overlords three four five stuff like that uh put them like here can you see uh, first of all can you see my ping it's just so on it if you if yeah, yeah there you go as I say, if you can't see my ping, you're gonna be like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> but if you put like over like three there, put overlord four like right there, overlord five there, six there, seven there. Just put them in like the open air spots because I, I did also see later on, you do develop this like overlord party that just sits in the middle of your natural. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but much, uh, sometimes I think about sending them to the corners. Yeah, just stuff, you could do that. I... You could do that while you build them too. Like just rally the egg there. Uh, and then, you know, you, like just send a few out and then that'll give you a warning that like, oh shit, Oracle is coming and your creep will give you a warning if he comes through the middle of the map, mostly like it'll give you like a bit more of a warning because you should have some tumors, you know, around and that way you can actually wrote if you see it on the minimap, Oracle's on its way. You could rotate your queen to whatever base you needed to defend if it was like proxied. Uh, and then once if you wanted to make blind spores and you just weren't sure if you needed them or not, the proper time to make them then would be when you start your third base. Uh, when you're fully saturated and like you're, you're that's around the time you're going to be making your hydrogen and your your evo chamber because then it would actually be a problem you, you would actually encounter like then it could be two or going up to three oracles soon at that point which would actually be really scary <coughs> again that we're talking if it's blind right if you see it again i don't mind if you see the stargate's done and you're like oh he's making an oracle right now again I, that is the time i don't mind that you make a, a spore because it's for sure going to happen um and you're, then you're for sure going to save your drones. But if it's not, or you don't know if it is, relying on queen defense is totally appropriate. It can totally work very well. And uh, chances are, that it's a higher chance you're not going to need them than you are. Like most Protosses, I would say, or most games, not even just Protoss, most games in general, you're not, you're never going to need a spore this fast. It's it's unlikely. I would say like 10% of the time will this actually occur. Or maybe like 5 to 10%. Because again... This is this speed of this spore is only relevant against somebody who would proxy you with a starport or a stargate because it's so fast. Right. It's just one of those things where you're deviating mineral saturation for longer again, and uh, it's another thing that'll slow you down. So, like the drone missing on your main, the fast spore, the larva not being pumped properly, all these things are why you're actually. We're going to look at income tab really fast. Look at the income really quick. This is actually a big tell too. Protoss can make probes while doing everything else. And this guy is actually... Look at his nexus really quick. He's not even chrono boosting. Which means he's not actually pumping probes as fast as he could be. He's he's neglecting the chrono boost mechanic of Protoss. But he still has six more workers than you. And that in itself shows you that, that the efficiency of what's going on. There's just inefficiencies going up to the point here. You should start. You should actually pass Protoss in the mid 30s, 
like we're talking 36 to like 37. You should start cranking ahead of Protoss with because your injects start kicking in. And this is assuming he's even chrono boosting. If he's not chrono boosting, you should have probably passed him at like 31. Uh, and then kept the lead from there. But there, again, we, uh, you know, I'm sounding like a broken record, but yeah, all the stuff that up, had it up to this game. But yeah, this is kind of scary for you because if you're ramping up at an equal pace of Protoss with economy, like this much, and he's also not killing drones, this is very scary for you because it means that you're going to have similar supplies now to Protoss for a while. And you don't want that to happen because you're making a weaker army than he is. You're making an army that is supposed to max out a lot faster. Because, like, you're still tied with him even now. At, uh, and th they're perfect. I remember how I was saying earlier how I was like, your build's about a minute late. And you're going to hit your drone count probably like 7 to like 7.15 or something. And you actually hit it probably around like right right around seven fifteen. Uh, your drone started hitting that point where you're like right around sixty six. Yeah, right at sixty, right at seven sixteen. You're at sixty eight. So definitely a little late here uh, by uh, you know sixty to seventy five seconds. Um, and then at this point too, uh, you would you would want to be like uh, getting ready, getting ready. You could start your like your fourth base. I'm not saying you have to saturate it. But you could start your fourth base. That way, any, when patches start mining out in your main base, you can start rotating drones over, which is starting to happen right now. And then, because um, again, like this is you're supposed to be at this timing a little bit faster, right? So if, if, we, if we're going to say a minute ago, you were at proper saturation of your third, and then you started a fourth, that gives you a minute to build the hatchery. And then when patches start mining out in your main, you could start rotating them to your new fourth. Uh, and then you're, that's when you're just cranking out roaches, 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 hydras, hydras, hydras. Well, this is kind of scary for you just because you're still trailing in supply. Oh, okay, you just passed them in supply. It's starting to... The roach kick-in is starting to happen. And the hydra. But this is... It's still super close. The best thing we can, uh, that I can... One of the things we're going to do, for sure, is I'll give you another example build after this game's over. And we'll just... We'll talk about pacing. And uh, I'll just... Basically, I'll just give you a quota to hit with exactly what you're trying to do uh, still here. Uh, you mentioned um, um, earlier coaching lessons um, that was uh, to max our uh, order to go with roaches to 120. Yeah. So yep. Sh should this um, always be against uh, Terran Mac or so? Uh, you said to go um, to, to ramp up roach count uh, earlier um, because the bronze gem was uh, actually only the safety roaches and then uh, max out on hydras. Um, so I think um, always that um, I'm a little bit... Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I see what you're saying. You're saying because you're making Hydras, the build's going to be later for this point too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. I, uh, I, I I do remember that. Uh, that's how I, I did do it for a while. Uh, just because it, it's more... It's it's easier to do it that way. Because uh, if, if you make our incorrect choice where it is air and you don't know that, it saves your ass. So we could we could literally recreate this as well. And, and I would say... Yes, you should max out a little bit later. It's, it's you know, like you're making a unit that is more expensive by 25 minerals and 25 gas each time. Uh, you know, it makes sense. But even with that being said, uh, the the max for you could still be at like nine minutes with max Hydra. Uh, like a full minute ago. Uh, almost a full minute ago. Like if Roach, Roach Hydra could max out like at 820, 830. Um, so like it's... Definitely, like, at this point now, when you're making the Hydras and stuff, like, your build is looking like it's, you know, it's looking like it's becoming fine. And you're, it looks like you're also getting ready to have the option to go into Lurkers and go into Broodlords, which is perfect, because you can, it gives you choices then to use if you need to. Uh, but your games will just feel so much different if by the time you hit Protoss, you're not hitting him when you're, like, almost tied in supply. But instead, you're hitting him when he's only, like, 130 and you're maxed out. That's what it. Sh that's what it should be. That's what it has to be. If you go Roach Hydra, and if it doesn't, that's that's again the the thing in Bronze Gym where I talked about how it's just like a macro test, where if you're not able to win with it, it means your macro is off, and that's exactly what's happening here. Your your macro is hitting that pa the the pacing of when you're maxing out is too late because now every second that goes by when he's when you're not actually hitting the Protoss already, he is 
his power is actually getting closer to yours and it's going to surpass yours because Roach Hydra does not scale properly versus anything in this game if your opponent makes units that are more expensive and more powerful like Storm, like Archon, Immortal. So the but again those are those units can't max out as fast as Roach Hydra can because they're more expensive. So you should have like 60 supply leads or something when you attack him. It should feel overwhelming for your opponent. And then when you're moving out too, uh, you d okay you did you did scout. I was about to say like if you didn't scout this and you're just running up here, this is <laughs> super scary. <laughs> but you scouted, so it's fine. And again, at this point, I don't even think you should micro this that much. Yeah, I don't give a shit that he has storm and he's got a good army. It's gonna suck for you because his supply is so high now. Because again, you should be fighting him when he's like 130, not 170. And what should happen is, look at your the, your queens should be injecting. They are injecting. Your other your natural queen is not injecting. Your third queen is injecting a bit. Your drone saturation is eight over on your third. It's one over on your na on your uh, natural and one over on your main. So you have ten drones, inefficiently mining on those three bases. You have three missing on your gold, and you have a fresh base that you could be also transferring to. So if you just fix those economies, and you transferred three to your gold and then like the other uh, seven to your new base. That would be great. You would be keeping it running, then creep spreading to keep controlling the map and also spinning your larva the second shit dies on whatever you think is going to be good. What, whether it be broodlords this time or just more hydras. So if, if you don't macro at all here and you fight this, I again, I think this is actually the uh, not the best thing to be doing here. I, I don't think you should just never look at it either. I think you could totally like... Our army is going to under attack or like you see where his army is and you see a fight coming If you see it looks like a bad fight you could always run away if you if you think you got damage done and you're like no You know what? I just killed this base. I don't need to throw my army away I'll, I'll run around somewhere else and try to hit something else That's fine uh, as long as you stay ag stay active and aggressive because you definitely don't want to give the Protoss a breathing room But spending too much time on microing this is definitely gonna be a mistake if that ends up being the case Okay, so you're doing what I said the first time. You killed it, you backed off. This is okay. But again, you don't want to give him too much time. So I would say pick another angle and hit fast. If you sit back and let him max, this is a mistake. So now he's going to... So this is actually a mistake. And here's why. Look at your money right now. This That's great. That's good. You have a large bank, which is what's supposed to happen. But... You're forcing yourself, like you're going to take a fight against him, no matter what, right? It's going to happen. But what's happening now is you're being too passive and you're making the Protoss, or like you're not making him do this, but he's choosing to attack you now. So what you're making happen though, is you're making the, the fight that is inevitably going to happen is not happening on your side of the map when you really want it to happen on his side of the map because your supply is not going to change here. It's, you're, you're already maxed. So you're going to be taking the same fight either way. Uh, but now, because the fight's happening on your side of the map, he is going to be cutting your units up into little bits and pieces as they spawn, because he's going to be killing your hatcheries as your units are being rebuilt. Whereas if you took the fight, like, over here, on, or I, I can't ping right now, it's, it's fine. I'm on your vision. But on his side of the map is all I'm saying. If you fought, like, at his third base, at his natural, just even where your army was when you killed his fourth base, if you fought there, you would whittle his army down. You might lose more than what he loses or you're going to for sure lose a lot more than he loses he might lose like 40 supply you'll lose like 100 that's normal that's standard because he's got storm at that point he's gonna definitely fuck you up uh but you have like 30 seconds then to remax and if you look at the build time of a hydra and a roach hydra is 24 seconds roach is 19 seconds you have enough to, and you should again your goal should be larva and you have right now you have uh 31 larva, which is respectable. It's not bad. I think it could be a little bit better because uh, you did have some cute injects that were not really being hit very well for a little while. And that should definitely be a, a big priority that you're working on. Um, but if you basically, if you if you maxed out, fought him across the map, and then you remaxed again and fought him again, suddenly you're fighting an army that has very low energy counts on Storm because he just burned a lot of it. He's got a low supply because he just lost a lot of it. And his push would be the exact same thing that it is right now, but weaker. Like, he's still going to push you after he kills your army. It's likely going to be the likely case that's going to happen. But his supply right now when he pushes you, and then when you fight defensively, it would be like 120 supply Protoss instead of 153. 
and he wouldn't have like 20 storms or like 15 storms banked up in his Templar. He would have like six or something, you know, because he, he would have just burned a lot of it before. And so, and he also, if his Templar were microed poorly and he ran them all in to die, because that's what some Protosses do, then maybe he has zero. And he, you know, he just burned all of his Templar. So this is just going to be difficult for you because you're going to, your, your Hydras are going to die always the first time and the Remax is going to get so fucked up now because your army is going to be fighting in bits and pieces and it's not going to be stacked. And then you're microing as well a lot, which you kind of have to now because if you don't micro this, your base is dead, uh, which puts it in a hard spot too because uh, you, you want to save it. It's part of your economy. But you're losing supply and you're not rebuilding it either. And it's because you're trying to micro it up. Okay, there we go. You just remade. That's good. I'm glad you did that. You just lost a massive chunk again. And you remade. Okay, you're, you have the right idea of remaking. That's good. I'm glad you're remaking during fights. But your idea of waiting for this fight to happen is definitely fucking you up really bad. And you see what I mean? You After the first fight, he had like... I'm going to say probably 15 storms for that first fight. But now look at his storms. He's got... I'm going through all of his Templars. He's got one, two, three, four. He's got four storms. on all of, Between all of his Templars, he has access to four more storms. And this could be... This army right now could be what you're fighting against with the Remax because you just lost your first army. And... Imagine if all these 34 Hydras that you remaxed on were being remaxed while he was walking across the map and not killing your gold base. You would suddenly be like, oh, four storms? I'm going to crush this army because you have 129 supply, four storm, and I'm remaxed because my gold didn't die. All that larva is still alive. I was injecting all my bases. I had enough to do it. Because you can see, like, look at your queen. That is uh, 100 energy queen plus. Look at your natural. That is 50 plus. Look at your main. That is 100 plus. Between... All, like 150, 100, that's 250 energy. And 250 energy is... Uh, uh, that's 10 injects. And 10 injects is 30 larvae in itself. So, if you you actually have 34 hydras right now, you could have had 64 larvae sitting there. And that could have... you know if, if your injects were your priority and that's what you were focusing on the whole time, uh, you could have definitely remaxed, is all I'm trying to say. And that, could, that army could be popping out now before he kills your gold. So that, yeah, always try to take a fight. Your first, like, always try to take as many fights as you can with Protoss, as long as you're maxed across the map. And then as he cro as he crosses, he's going into another max Zerg army and another max Zerg army. So you, because again, your, your armies are supposed to die, but your economy is what you want to keep alive. And now your army's like we were talking about before. It's just it's fighting like se seven hydras fight here. Sorry, I, my, this game is so loud. I turned, I muted it for a second. What'd you say? Uh, yeah, just uh, the units are tripping in uh, pieces by pieces. Yeah, so. exactly. You want to you want to avoid that situation at all costs. Uh, it means you've lost control of the game essentially. So which means you you just allowed him to walk across the map for free. Yeah, and now at this point, point of no return, you're definitely dead. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this game, I feel like if you if you would have just poked him the first time and then done the remax thing, even though I think your your build could have been faster, and that's a huge deal, uh, I still think you could have won this game if you would have just fought him when you killed his fourth. If you just literally ble bled his army down a little bit and then remax and do it again and remax and do it again and as long as you just kept expanding and kept your economy mining efficiently he would never keep up with you because that you want him to actually lose resources uh even if you're losing five thousand resources and he only loses three thousand if you're mining off of five bases and he's mining off of three you're still winning the game even though you're playing inefficient because you're efficiently mining so much more than he is like you're denying him income and it's it's allowed then for you to be a little wasteful to still win because you're making him lose even though you're losing more than he is you're still forcing him to lose what he has to a degree and he can't rebuild like you can because his he's mining out and he's running out of money 
All right. Uh, so about that whole game that we just talked about, do you have any questions about anything that maybe may or may, or may not have made sense? Mm, I think uh, that should be good. Okay. So I think... Yeah, no. You what? Sorry? No, I think um, all questions have been answered. Nice. So here's what I think we, uh, would be good. I could give you a quick, like, eight-minute example, eight to nine-minute example of ZVP, and then you know, just just as like like we're just gonna max out, and yeah. it'll give you like the you know if if you ever forget what I say or if you ever want a refresher on when you want to take things, you can just you know do that uh, through that through this basically. So it'll make your life much easier as to like you know just ha like basically just having a quota to be like okay well that's what I should be doing. And then after that, we can jump into a ZVT. Yeah. All right. All right, so make you referee, add an AI, Pertus, let's do it. And this, again, I'm, I'm going to do safety roaches and mass hydras. Exactly what you did la the last game. Um, upgrades uh, versus Protoss that um, might go always um, attack first. Arrange uh, upgrades. Yeah. And then uh, when I finish that round, I uh, level three, I go for. Uh, then I'll probably um. Uh, Thank you, Rogo. Thank you, man. Uh, stuff with melee re attack and circling speed and circling uh, adrenal cannons. So. But I I never used them. <laughs> yeah, as yeah, like so for now. You like <clears throat> if you're gonna get zergling speed and adrenal and oh, adrenal glands and stuff like that, yeah. I would say worry about getting it later. Don't make it before you're maxed, because that's another thing that's gonna. Like, I wasn't actually watching that in the last game we played or that last game we watched. I didn't make it. I think. Yeah. Late. Okay. If you cause if you make that shit early, you're definitely gonna slow down your max again. That's gonna be another thing that will that would slow you down. So I ripped my drone off at 190. I got here right at 300. Like we talked about before, and then um, again now, just at 5SD, 5SD, 5SD. So every single second I can make a drone, we make that drone. Close patches, I have two drones per. And then we can uh, take our pool in just a sec. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> so you take um, always 18 pool? Yeah, uh, I would say go 16, 18, 20. 16, okay. And that way you're never gonna rip off the mineral line ever, and uh, your minerals will just always look they'll be they'll be pumping basically pretty crazy, really really efficient. And you can see I'm still making drones right now. It, like, you can totally get away with this against Protoss. Against Terran, I do think you should save four lar four, two larvae for four lings right away. But against Protoss, you could actually just make drones like this. Um, I will make four lings now, though. Just, just again, because, like, you don't, again, you don't have to do this. It is an option you have, though. But, because, you could, like, right now is when your overlord would see, is he going stalker? Like, is it, like, the core would be finishing right about now, or soon, depending on what his opener was. And then, uh... That's when you'd be like, if it's a stalker, I don't need to make lings, and if it's a adept, I should make lings. Because this build also, uh, you get the third queen really fast, which helps a lot at dealing with that kind of pressure, and you also get the uh, roachhorn really like all things considered, the roachhorn is pretty fucking fast with this build, fast much faster than other builds. So my third queen's on the way, my layer's on the way. I am still cranking drones like crazy. Yeah, and I always um, feel a little bit awkward uh, when I transition to the third. Because I don't know exactly when to take the road one or the first people chamber and yeah. get the gases and then uh, probably supply blocked at uh, 52. Yeah, yeah. Well, look at me. So far, look at the middle line right now. We have all these drones popping out, and I just spent all that larva, and now we take the Roach Warren. And now we take the double gas. Because we can afford it, and look, my, watch my larva. It's like, 
always one or zero. And now we're about to have another inject pop off, so we're gonna our money's gonna start ramping up, and we're just gonna crank out another round of drones one more time right here. And lots of it gets spent right away. And then now the layer's done. And even though the roach one's off by a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. It's it's fine. Again, the larva is your priority here. And now we're fully saturated. We can send a drone to our third as we get ready to start uh, making roaches. So go take our third base and start roach speed. Start a roach. We can rally all our hatcheries to the new base. And make the safety roaches for now. So we're going to go to about 10. We right now have seven. Nine, we need one more. Now 10, we still haven't made the hydrogen. We still haven't made any of that stuff yet. Uh, the new stuff yet, because we haven't started making drones again yet. Now we are st we are starting to make drones, but even though I'm starting to make drones, we're not gonna make it yet, because again, larva is priority. It just popped off, so now I'm making a massive round of drones. And after this round of drones, once they start walking across the map, then I will make Evo Chamber and Hydrogen and gas and all that stuff. So now they're popping out. Make Evo Chamber, Hydrogen, gas, and send my queen now to my third to become an injector. And you can, at this point too, you could even take a fourth queen to continue just being a creep guy, like somewhere on the map. Okay. And now we're making drones again. Making drones, making drones, making drones. But if you see the larva, it's it, like again, like it should always stay very low the whole time. It should never really get out of hand. And remember how I said you should be fully saturated at your third by six minutes? You at like <laughs> you didn't saturate till seven fifteen. And right now our drone count is fully saturated. If as soon as they're done, it's fully saturated. At five fifty three. And now we can start a fourth base and we just so we can transfer drones from the main when patches deplete and we're making hydras now. So inject, inject. And inject. We can uh, take our gases at our third. We have one extra drone on that gas. And make hydras. And we should be maxing by like before nine minutes. That's the idea. Uh, and your max again last game was like over 10. So like the Protoss was. When you hit the Protoss, he was like 170 supply. Which is definitely scary for Zerg, right? That's super scary. Make Hydras, make Hydras. And now we can transfer a drone to my fourth from my third to fix it. Actually, my gas in my main is undersaturated. I didn't realize that. I put that drone there and we're good. Make Hydras. And then let's just say, okay, I know he's got a third and I want to make drones. If I can totally do that. If I, if I know he has a third base, I could make drones, or I could choose, if he only has two bases, I could max out on Hydras here. But let's say I know he's got a third, so I'm like, you know what, let's make, let's go up to 80 drones right now. Because I have a good number of Hydras here. So I'm feeling safe, even if he, like, I just made drones, and I, obviously this is a Protoss AI, so... This is gonna look like a joke here, but... This is a very fucking strong army already. If you get hit by a timing, and you, you know, this is very, very powerful for Zerg this fast. And then now, we made a good amount of drones for the fourth. We could start a fifth. Because we, if we decided to make drones, you could totally take another base. And you just make Hydras again. And you're always injecting, always injecting. Start level 2 range weapons. We could also, at this point, start uh, an infestation pit to get ready to go into a hive. And then don't make the Lurker Din or the Spire until the hive actually starts. Saturate my gas at my fourth. And... Uh, saturation. Um you make probably um, a round of safety hydras. Yeah, like you would still, you could still follow the rule of like going up to like 120, 130 supply of hydras. Because I was uh, mostly taken and uh, uh, saturating out to the fourth until 80 drones and then start hydras. But that's you, if you get away with that, it's better. If you if you get a scout off right away that he's going for a faster, that's even better. This is I played very safe this game. 
the, the way this build would go. This would be like, you don't know if you're going to get all in or not, and you're like just being really cautious. But look at the max. We already maxed that at 839 with mass hydras. So you definitely can max this fucking fast. And then now, you know, obviously you, you would want to do a, you know, scouted, uh, like with a changeling or a roach or something to just see what is going on actually across the map. Uh, like where his bases are located. So you wouldn't move out blindly like I just did. Like your scouting was actually one of your stronger points. So you, I feel like you got that more on lockdown for the most part. But your macro definitely kind of suffered. And if you take these fights like this, like you're just going to crush Protoss. And again, I know this is an AI, but your average Protoss player in your games, at this point, at like 8.30 to 9 minutes, should have like 120 supply. Or something. Like right around there. Like just over 100. Not 170. And your games will look like this where you don't even need to micro your army. You just literally keep injecting your bases while your army does whatever it's going to do. For the most part. Like it is, it's going to, it's going to fuck the Protoss up at the very least. Possibly win the game. And you just constantly keep your, your drum count up and your, uh, if you're making new buildings and you keep your Hydra count solid, you know. And then at this stage now, once you're Hive, now I would say, go ahead and start Zergling Speed if you want. Go ahead and start a second Evo Chamber if you want, so you can start getting melee upgrades. You can go ahead and start Lurker upgrades, you can go ahead and start a Greater Spire. Like, it all comes together. And now you can transition to anything you want to, if you if you want to. Uh, or you could just be like, you know what? Fucking Remax, Roach, Roach Hydra, or Mass Hydra. And you can start level 3 weapons now as well on your first Evo Chamber for Hydras. Uh, yeah. That's... Do that build, like, as, as close as you can to that. And you're just gonna feel so good about everything, because you're just gonna... Like, you're, you're, again, it's all about Larva. It's all about Larva. And there was a big Larva inefficiency in your game that you just played a second ago, and this game was all about just prioritizing Larva first, and everything else got added on top of it. All right, all right, all right, all right. I made you leader, so you can uh, we can jump into a ZVT. Just a second, replay. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically your. Uh, your first inject that pops off, you're gonna spend it on drones, and that after you spend that larva, you make the roach horn. That's the big one right there, and that's also when you take the gases, or your natural. And then the second time you evolve your tech and you make the hydrogen and the evo chamber and stuff is when you then spend your next inject. That is after safety roaches. It's the first drone wave after safety roaches, which is gonna be the first drone wave for your third. Once you make that like ten drone wave all at once, or like eight drones. With those drones that start popping out of the eggs, grab a couple of them, make your gas in your main, make your evo chamber, and make your hydrogen. As they're starting to transfer. Don't like you don't have to rip off your mineral line or anything. Uh because those buildings will finish easily in time to actually start utilizing them. Because again, you're you're not looking to you, like the reason why you don't need to rush these things is because if you rush them before you're saturated, they're just gonna sit there idle while you're still saturating. Uh like, you're still in the drone-making phase. So yeah, that's always um, something I, I struggled with. A um, long time, I, I prioritized the upgrades um, early. Um, yeah. Uh, it just screws you over, for sure. It screws you over, for sure, because, uh, like, you, you have very limited resources. The, the less drones you have, the more limited your overall resources are. And if you're using that limited resources, instead of increasing your economy to then increase your upgrades faster, you're going to have Hydras that are like, we're fully upgraded, but there's only eight of us when there could be 18 of us instead that are still working on upgrades, which is still better when you have 18 that are, you know, not fully upgraded yet. Because it's, you're always, you're still easily going to, no matter what, get to those full upgrades before you do your max timing anyways. But yeah, it definitely just hurts. Okay. So, 16 hatch against Saren, it's whatever. Or wait, was it? Hold on. Did you 17 that or 16 that? No, you 17 that, sorry. You did, you did. Perfect. Okay, I like that. Good shit. I was about to be like, 16, bro. You're like, bro, I, I did 17. And I'm like, <laughs> no. Okay, wait, yeah, okay, you did. 
No, that's good shit. Good shit though. It's it's better against Terran for real. Overlord placement again is looking good. I like it. Yeah, or with the send out my signal overlord hmm. to the main, uh, to natural, and then to the entrance. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you see a Reaper. This, yeah, against Terran, I would never say. Okay, you don't need to make four links here. Like the Reaper mechanic, you always have to make those four links. So, just keep in mind that that is definitely required <laughs> against yeah. Terran. Okay, and your Overlord should still be fine. You saw a Reactor Factory. I I actually kind of like that you you just gave yourself, like if you if you see a building building like that, and you know you see like okay he's got a factory that's underway right now in his main base and he's got a reactor that's also you know being started it's just now being started even without even knowing that's a factory the fact that you just saw that how you know that building is there this is most likely going to be hellions uh if a player is going to go for uh like marines a lot of times like just he's going to go for like a 2 on 1 Usually, he's actually not going to make this first marine. Usually. And if he does make a marine, it's because he skipped the reaper. And he made a marine first and said to just only kill the overlord. Or something like that. Um, anyone who wants to go bio wants to get that reactor down as fast as they can. Uh, but, so yeah. like I Again, I don't mind that you just you confirmed it for yourself to go, is that a factory? Yeah, it is. And now you know, okay, yeah, there's a very high chance he's going to swap those and go hellions now. And because even though you... Yeah, that's why I made the Turn around with the overload again. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. I I like that you did that, just to confirm it for yourself, because your overlord still has a good chance of not dying. It the one marine kills an overlord so slow. It might die. It yeah, died. It, 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 it died. <laughs> it died. It's okay. Like, honestly, if it ever does die though, and you just gave yourself a for a sh like a hundred percent read here where it's like, yep, no, I know what he's doing, that is still worth it. Like, if, if you could just discern that it, it, he's already doing that and save it, obviously that's like, that's even better. But as long as you know what's coming, that's great, because here's the thing. An Overlord dying is actually less costly than overmaking Lings when you don't need them. Because if this guy was actually going 2-1-1 and you made a bunch of safety Lings, like, when you don't need them, that's awful. And it's way that, that in itself is way more costly than losing an Overlord. Uh, I know you're not going for a speed thing opener, which is so it, it, it's very less likely that you're going to be going for safety links anyways, other than the first four. But it's it just it makes you feel more confident in the game overall that you know what's going on. So I I, I don't mind it. I don't mind that it, it died. Also, you saw a bunker. I'm not going to lie. That bunker place, the, the fact that he built a bunker is like almost an even trade with the fact that you lost an overlord. Like that that slows his build down a little more because he's actually, you know. That's he can definitely salvage it later, but that's costly right now. It's the same cost as an overlord to just invest into that when he's not going to need it yet. Queen complete, ready to. Clear. All right, and then uh, okay, I'm going to look at your building time again this time against Terran. So we talked about a lot about your scouting again right there, and I think your scouting's fine, uh, so far. Your However, your base build, let's see. You start your layer, you start your third queen. See, this time, you did it right. I would say, yeah, like, definitely a lot better now. You're actually prioritizing the larva here and then prioritizing the roach warren. This is, your build's gonna feel so much stronger now. And if and if you're if you don't realize that this is so important, and sometimes you are doing this, and sometimes you aren't, and you're like, wow, sometimes I'm just like crushing, and other times it feels like they're so much better than me, like they just have so much more shit than they should. This is why, like this is such a big, just like indicator for if your build's gonna be like it's gonna be powerful or not as as to how fast it just like blows into the mid game. Your build right now is on point, and if you take gases right now, this is perfect. Your gases should go down at the same time as the roach horn, basically. So your gases are slightly late, but it's still it's close enough. It's you're 30, like 20 seconds late on the gas. It's not that bad because you will always have a little bit of a gas bank. The only thing this kind of does is it's going to make it kind of hard to make your safety roaches on. Like you're going to be like 
Like literally scraping gas at the bottom here. Just as you get it, you're gonna spend it to make safety roaches, essentially. If you make them right away. Yeah, now I get supply blocked and don't make roaches to <laughs> get to my third. <laughs> okay. And so <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, Yeah. If this uh if this happens on most like this map is a bit awkward. Uh, because of the, how the third is placed. But if this ever happens, don't ever feel like you can't take a third still. You could totally take your fourth base as now your third base. It could, that, you could do that because, again, this build is going to be a fast ramp of pressure. So, like, if you're like, well, fuck, I'm going to just wait for a while and I'll take my third. I would say you could actually, like, go to everyone's vision so you can see my pings. You could have done this. If you see Hellions just sitting there and Reaper sitting there and you're like, well, I'm supply blocked. You could take your drone and go like that. And go take that base. Literally take the base with the rich gas as your as your third. And which it, it will eventually be your fourth, but it just it's like a little backwards. Like you you still are gonna have four bases eventually, because you're always gonna take your fourth when your third's fully saturated anyways. But that just means you would eventually take your third as your fourth, like a little bit later. But getting the third down, if you can if you can help it, is very important. And I I do think you you could have taken it. You know, instead of waiting for the supply block to go away, because like right now, uh, you're getting ready to want to take it like right about now, because your saturation is good for two bases. Like your drone's sitting there, being like, "I'm ready to go." Uh, if he ran out right now, it would take you. Uh, you would throw that hatchery down by like 422, 425, somewhere in there. And if you start your hatchery by like, we'll say we'll say 425, we'll be fair with the timer. Like that's that's probably realistic for how long it would take the drone to get there and build it. And then we'll see when you actually take your third, as opposed to 425. Okay, so you took your third at 455. So you could have taken your third base like 30 seconds faster. Um, that would be just like one screen length to the right of where it already is. So just feel like that's always an option. You don't have to, like, uh... I would say it's, it's definitely something you should try to do. Like, if, again, you, a problem occurs where you're like, fuck, I'm supply blocked and my roaches aren't going to be available for a while. <laughs> Yo, thank you for the raid, Boris. All right. Uh, now, double overseer scouts, I would say maybe a little excessive. Probably just stick with the one and you'd be fine. Um, and again, the scouting thing we talked about earlier, like we'll go back and talk about your scouting really fast. Your overlord timed itself really well here. You moved your overlord from your natural to his base. And ideally what you want to be doing is you want to be scouting into his base right around four minutes. Start into like move into his base at four minutes. That way you get a read between four to five minutes about what's going on. And if you did move into his base right now, there is nothing that would kill you because he has no vision on the left side of his base and by the time the command center saw the overlord if he then immediately on un un uh, uh, he unloaded the marine out of the bunker and just came over to kill the overlord you would still get far enough to see the, the starport and his reactor factory still easily like he would see everything basically before it died and if it dies again that's kind of what's supposed to happen it's fine because getting that read is more important and if you saw this this is that moment where I would say, actually seeing the fact that he has the Tech Lab Starport, then it's okay to build spores. Uh, and then, because you, you would be reacting to it by the time you are fully saturated on your natural. You're not reacting to it when you only have like eight drones on the natural. Because it's impossible for him to have, have a Banshee in your base that fast. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The yeah. Like, you know, yeah, we talked about this before. But having that scout would have made what is about to happen later on, not happen at all, which is your whole drone line had to pull off and you ran away for a, lo a little while. Which we'll, we'll get back to really fast now. So you have the safety roaches, you're starting to make drones again. Uh, and then now suddenly a banshee arrives in your natural. And this is one of those things too, where I'm going to just throw this out there too. Even though you didn't scout it, you would have been totally fine if you just used two queens to fight this. Like, and made an overseer. So always, if you're going to... Here's the thing. If you... If you're not sure what's going on with your opponent, I actually don't mind the fact that you made two overseers, but check this out. 
What if you make one over here? Go to his base and scout. If you if you still need to get a read at that point, if you're like, I'm not really sure, I need to know. And you make a second over here defensively. Just sitting at your base somewhere, like in the middle of your base. That way, if it's something cloaked does happen, because you don't know if it's a possibility right now or not, you're just unsure, you now suddenly have two queens and an overseer that can push this, bans push this banshee away. Uh, and then it kills only like two drones and has to run away, because queens are going to kill it otherwise. Because the banshee is surprisingly weak to queens if the queens can see it. Um, but again, like I don't even think, realistically, you need an overseer to scout the, the Terran, because if you did the four-minute scout... You wouldn't have you would not have needed an overseer at all, because you could have made spores, which would have been, which would have been appropriate one per base, uh, at a timer that would not have been hiccuped really hard with your drone count, and then you're suddenly a queen spore could easily just shit on a banshee when it arrives. But yeah, like this is definitely another, you know, it's causing a major problem for you because not only are you not mining, but you're also losing, you're going to probably lose like 10 drones before this banshee gets out of here. Okay, he, he decided not to sacrifice. Oh, he's coming back. There's 10 drones. Like this is, this, every drone that dies is even, you know, obviously, I could, this is, that I don't need to be... A coach to be able to tell you this, but every every single drone that dies on top of the previous one is more painful than before. <laughs> but yeah. it uh, the 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 big thing though is you just like every drone that dies is it's your build is now that many seconds slower, that many seconds slower, that many seconds slower, and with the fact that you just lost thirteen drones, your build now at this stage when you're starting to saturate your third, I would say your build now is like forty five seconds behind, roughly. Like 45 seconds to maybe even almost a minute behind again, just because of this Banshee. So getting that four minute scout is definitely also critical, right? You, you always want to make sure you get that off. And then if you if you don't know, again, if you do not know, if you're like, I am just not sure what the fuck is happening. I am confused. I might need to have spores. If you make spores blindly at like five minutes, okay? Imagine if you made spores blindly at five minutes. Look at your natural, it's fully saturated. Look at your main, it's fully saturated. Look at your drone in production. You're starting to saturate your third, which means you would be adding on spores. Ideally, at the same time, you're adding on your hydrogen, your gas, your evo chamber, which is not going to be that impactful. It's, it's going to definitely slow your build down a tiny bit, but it's not going to be as detrimental as it would be if you were ripping drones off the mineral line before you're fully saturated uh, on your main and your natural, which is what you did the other game when you made a spore at like... 315 or something like that, which was super fucking fast. Um, and the spore's build time is only 21 seconds, which means if you took it at like 5 minutes, your spore would be done at 521, and let's see at 521 what's happening. He's not here yet. His cloak is just about to finish. Which again is, the, it's the, the reason why I say this is important, and why the 5 minute spore is nice, is because you cannot build cloak as fast as you can build a banshee. A Banshee's build time is 43 seconds. Cloak research is 79 seconds. The exact same thing can be said about a Battlecruiser. A Battlecruiser cannot hit you as fast as, like, the first Banshee could. Like, the fact that he has a Banshee, if he just went to your base right away before Cloak was done, suddenly he kills four drones max to two queens hitting it, and two queens just kill it. You know what I mean? Like, he'll, he'll, if he just sacrifices the Banshee and you don't micro the drones at all, he'll kill, like, four drones and your two queens would pop the Banshee. Uh, like, uh, you know, these, these numbers are probably what would happen. Uh, if there's a little bit of miss micro on his part, maybe he kills less or something like that. Or if he tries to save it and run away, again, maybe he kills less than four. But realistically, if he, j if he just were to, like, kill as many as he could and Banshee explodes, he would probably kill, like, four before the Queens would stop it. So the spore timing is all about actually stopping the cloak version of Banshee. And also, if you're, if, again, if, you, this is, if you're not sure at all about what's happening, it would also deal with a Battlecruiser. Because the Battlecruiser would warp into your base by like 5.30 at fastest to like 6 minutes. Like you're not going to see a BC warping in your base at like 4.15. That's impossible because of just the, the tech path build time of everything. is It's physically impossible to get it that fast. Yeah, that definitely... Uh, 
It was painful for you. That's a lot of drones that just died. And now it's what just happened there. Even though your build, your build this game was on point. I was like, damn, you're okay. Your, your Roach one's great. Your Evo Chamber timing was great. Your drone larva usage was a lot better this time around. Here's the thing though. That Banshee just dis it distracted the fuck out of you. Yeah, it yep. like it did a lot of damage and you're not injecting your third now. You're not injecting your natural now. Your main is, I would say, a little bit behind on injects because you just injected and you still have excess. So you're missing larva indirectly on the fact that you're not injecting. Um, and yeah, the drones dying was definitely huge. So now what's going to happen is, is you're going to have the same exact problem you had against Protoss where your supply is going to stay near his for a long time. Because the thing about Terran is is Terran starts ramping up slower than other races because they have to do things like not only build the building, but then also build an add-on and swap add-ons around and shit, which is a, it's like a big time sink for Terran to do this. But as soon as it's all set up, Terran supply just starts going, just, it just it explodes. It just goes crazy. So now you're still similar supply with Terran as the Terran's getting ready to have, you know, more of an explosion. Not, it, not, not even like I don't I don't know what the fuck this guy's build is to be fair like I don't, I don't know like he's got like an unused reactor with two fucking racks just pumping marines I don't understand but uh yeah uh I mean it looks like he wants to go bio because he's going double engineer, engineering base but uh realistically you're still going to be closer to Terran supply than you should be which is still scary you don't want to be close to Terran supply ideally because uh, again if you're going to go Roach Hydra you should always be crushing supply numbers. <laughs> and then if you know you're up against anything like this, literally don't go crazy on spores like you just did. I would say you went a little bit overboard here. One spore. Yeah, and, I think so. Yeah, just one spore in the middle of your mineral line. And the reason why that is, is because even though the spore sometimes can't hit the Banshee, its detection radius is bigger than its attack radius, and the Queen will always be able to hit the Banshee if it's if the Banshee's attacking your mineral line. So, and then as, as well, like, I would say now it would be appropriate to have an Overseer with, like, maybe a, a one or two creep spreading Queens that could also roam around and also push Banshees away while you're spreading creep. Um... Because you also want your queens to be safe while they're spreading creep. You don't want their queen to be way out in the middle of the creep area and just get cloaked on. And be like, well, fuck. Uh, so, yeah, I would say an overseer and maybe like one or two extra queens would be a, actually a really good response here rather than six spores. Because you did, you actually did the overseer queen response too. So you double dipped in it and you're playing overly defensive now. Which is why if you look at the drone count at seven minutes, you're behind by two workers still. Which is, that's, I know, everything that added up obviously made this happen, but... This is really bad for Zerg because remember how we were fully saturated on three bases at, at the game we just gave you an example of at like 5, uh, 58 or 6 minutes. It was like we, we were already at 66 drones at that point. Um, so now the fact that you're at 7 minutes, you and the, the last game too, you, you fully saturated at 7.15. And in this game at 7.06, you're, you're barely just above two base saturation because two base saturation is 44. See, like the queens just zone that out. Perfect. That's all you really need. Say, so I like. This is gonna be rough. Uh, this is just one of those games where we can talk about a lot of things, like how to do things. But everything about this game is now so hard for you, because you should, you should be maxed like right now, ideally. And if you were maxed right now, you still might not even kill this Terran, with how many fucking tanks he's made. Like, there's a good chance you're going to fuck him up pretty bad. Like, you're going to probably kill the third. You might you might even just straight up kill him. But if you were maxed right now, you are, you're going to mess him up pretty bad. And then you just remax. And guaranteed, if you don't kill... If you somehow don't kill him with the first max, you 100% kill him with the remax. Because this guy's build is actually kind of slow. Like, he's also a little slow with how he's pacing his build. Like, it's not the most efficient, I would say. But again, like the average supply of your opponents is going to be between like 120 to 140 around nine minutes, always. Like if they're more efficient, it's probably be closer to 140. If they're not super efficient, probably closer to like 120 uh, on average. If he, um, 
for a second in tanks, should I um, go uh, more to roaches? Um, stay on hydras. Honestly, you could just... The fact that he's going for, um, uh, like, air harass and also... Uh, he's, the fact that he's just basically going into mech, or no, I'm sorry, he's, I mean, he's, he is going like, it, it like started off looking like mech and now he's going bio. Um, you could do either way. Honestly, the composition for you doesn't really matter that much. You could go a hybrid of Roach Hydra, you could go Heavy Hydra, you could go Heavy Roach. Anything would work here. Uh, as long as you just hit the supply numbers you're kind of looking for faster, because if, again, if you hit Roaches, uh, like heavier on the roaches, you should be maxing out like 30 seconds before you could max out with Hydra. And if you go Hydras, obviously it has a little bit more power into it because you're going to deal with... Like Hydras just do a little bit more DPS than roaches do. They do die a little faster. But the raw DPS output of Hydras is kind of a bit higher. So either way, you're going to fuck them up pretty bad. And it would be like roach. So for roaches, basically, you should have like 200 supply versus like 100 supply of Terran or like 110. If you go Hydras, it would be more like 200 supply of Hydras versus like maybe 130 supply for Terran. But those should be the realistic numbers you should be looking at. And the fact that right now, again, you're, you're only 14 supply difference with the Terran at this point. It doesn't matter if you had Roaches, Hydras, or any, ver like any version of either one of those, a, co a combination. You're going to get fucked up pretty bad now because his army is too big. This is going to do more damage. Like your Roach Hydra scales horribly it maxes fast but it scales horribly so that that style is all about control and like constantly just shoving your opponent like back down and just never letting him get to where he wants to be because if he gets to where he wants to be you're just gonna be like wow roach hydra loses a lot <laughs> so i would say again this game Better macro for you, but worse scouting and worse reaction. And an overall screwed. Like, and again, your macro wasn't even perfect either. I'm, I'm not going to be like, your macro was amazing. Because you did not inject at all during the harass with the cloak shit. Like, you kind of panicked a little bit, which is, it happens to a lot of people. But just you got to just make sure. Even if you're, no, if, if you're not sure. If you're ever, like, confused. Like, you know what? I have no fucking clue what this guy's doing right now. Five minutes more. And suddenly, this problem would have been solved. And the, all future problems would be solved where you're like, oh shit, there's a battle cruiser in my main base. Or again, any type of cloak banshee opener in any way, shape, or form. Where you're like, sometimes you might be like, oh shit, he's hitting the third. I thought he was going to go to the natural. All cloak banshee problems will be solved if you just five minute blind spore. If you're not sure, again, because you're blind, you're not sure if he is or isn't doing that. Um, and you'd be great. Uh, and then, yeah, like right now, you are ahead of Terran by nine supply. I imagine this fight is going to end with you losing your whole army and the Terran supply. I'm just going to guess, okay? Unless he overcommits his bio super hard from the tanks. If he plays this properly, his supply when this fight is over should be like 140. And you should be down to like 100. That's what I. That's what my guess is. Because that's, that's just how Hydra Roach scales. It scales like shit. <laughs> versus or any almost anything in the game. If... Uh, you know, because he's not going for an army that's really easy to mass. The fact that he has tanks makes this a problem. That would be the equivalent of you teching to, like, lurkers. Like, really fast. Like, or something, like, powerful. And that does AoE. The, uh, like, if he if he only had marine medevac, that would be the equivalent of you going mass hydras. More or less. Uh, so, it's, it's going to be scary. So, yeah. Let's just see what happens. And now you have supply deficit already. And you're still, you're actually still rebuilding too. You have nine more hydras in production, which means realistically right now, you're 18 supply lower and a queen. So you're 20 supply lower than what you really are. So you're already down to 143 here. And he's still at 178. Like this sucks. For, like this just, this just shows you how weak Roach Hydra is if you allow your opponent to get high supply. So again, the goal should always be don't let them get high supply. And it, it's because you're taking a fight at 11 minutes and 30 seconds which is now, you know, proceeding to go towards 12 minutes here. But it's this fight started around 11.30. Your fights should be starting around 9 minutes. So you're 2.5 minutes later than it should be. It 
And then now, it's just this game now, the only way you win this game. So let me let me throw this out there too. If you ever find yourself in a position like this where you're like, shit, okay. It's not going well. Um, Roach Hydra's not really w making it work for me anymore here. It's uh, Things are looking pretty dicey. The best thing you can do, I'm not even kidding, would be probably to counterattack him. Go for like some weird type of base trade situation if all you have is Roach Hydra. And then try to tech into something that is more cost efficient. Because if you can get him to turn around and you lose your army but you do damage to him in the process. And then now you suddenly tech switch while you retake your base. And now the next time he gets over to your base you have Broodlords or Lurkers or something. I would say Broodlords here would be the better choice because he has a lot of tanks. That would be a great way to possibly get yourself back in the game. But if you just keep fighting his army, it you're fighting his army with a... It's like a brute force version of Zerg that only works if you have supply advantages. So you're 100% giving your... You're, you're giving yourself a 100% chance to lose if you take this fight. Because your army scales poorly if it's inefficient... If it's inferior supply number. So that's the only chance you have of winning here. If, if you ever find yourself in this position again in the future. Uh... I would say the only way you could that, that that what I just said doesn't make sense, and that you still could kill his army, is if he like is if he kind of does what he's doing right now, where he leaves a ton of supply at his natural. Like look at between his natural and his third, that's a lot of bio, and he just left it there because he's worried about a counterattack, and, and then he also only has basically tanks here, when he really needs to unsiege and just go home. Like he's to like his army's kind of thinning out right now, and he's allowing you to keep rebuilding. So he really needs to just boost the hell out of here with Medivax and go leave. Because <laughs> if he loses it, that's obvious. Like, it doesn't mean he loses the game, but that's obviously bad for Terran, right? But look at that. Look, look, I mean, look how powerful that is. Even though he's got less supply here by a lot, he's still crushing Hydras. Yeah. I think he flies now. Yeah. And now he's regrouping. Yeah. yeah. The second that regroups, you're done. And... Yeah, I tried to catch up. Yeah. And now it's... Yeah. Now, his army just got like three times as powerful as it was before. Because, again, it's... It's not because of like... Oh, his supply is, you know, high. or that, that is a problem, obviously. But it's because his army is just exponentially more powerful than yours because of how it synergizes together. The bio, all it does is it covers the tanks. So when you look at the tanks... 7 kills, 6 kills, 17 kills, 15 kills, 15 kills. Like, these tanks are just murdering your Zerg army. And he just he just is in the way with his bio. And now he even has another tank. Uh, so yeah, like it... The game has become out of control for you. And, uh, again, the, the only way to retain control would be, once again, he's fortified here. Go counterattack his base. Go kill his third command center. Go kill his natural. If you literally walked into his natural right now with your army and he just sat here... Because he's not moving. He's not scouting you either. He just is, like, paranoid. He's like, I hope the Zerg throws his army away. That's what he's hoping for because he's so passive. If you just ran across the map and then he, by the time he realized what you're doing was when you, like, approached his rocks at his natural... And you're like, and then he's like, oh shit, like there's actually an army in my base. And you just overpower that one tank and that little bit of bio. And suddenly you start breaking down his orbital command. It is natural. You break into his main. You get on top of his production. And sure, you lose a little bit of supply in the process. But he also now loses the ability to rebuild units. He then has to make a choice so to bait. Or go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so if I go for a counter tank, should I go for the production? Um, or for the I, I would say, yeah, go f like if you were maxed out, you could probably kill his planetaries as well but i mean if you're and also if you have more money it would make sense to also kill planetaries but at this point in this game your main is mined out your natural's mined out your thirds or like you're, you're mining out is what i'm trying to say like you don't have a lot of money left i would say it would make more sense now to be more conservative with your army and a little a little less wasteful so maybe going for like non-planetary fortress areas would be would make more sense so because what you'd want to do is not remake hydras constantly you want to tech switch into broods so you, wanna, you would probably want to maximize your Hydras as long as you could. Whereas if this was earlier in the game, like the first time you took this fight, before you threw your army away in the first place, if you would have counterattacked him, he wouldn't have had planetaries. And you had a lot more money to work with then too. So you could have also remade Hydras at that point. They would have actually been okay. 
because it would have turned it into the situation where it was like against Protoss, where if you can force a fight to happen on his side of the map after you fuck his economy up, you can remax while he pushes across the map with a smaller army, and you could possibly just win it with Hydras. You know what I mean? Yep, I understand. Okay. Uh, but yeah, at this point, when your money is like really thin, I would say Broodlords would be the best way to get yourself out of the situation with a chance of winning. Yep. Uh, that was also my main choice, was just tanks. Yeah. Because um, uh, right. Yeah. Them, but, uh, at this point, I don't even have Spire. Yeah, because th this, really th this is definitely that moment when you need to be tech switching because you're never going to win with just Hydras. The only way you win with Hydras is if you attack him creatively. Like, you don't just run into tanks repeatedly. You, uh, by like focusing 100% on defense, you hopefully turn him around. Kill his base instead. That's the only way Hydras would ever work here. Uh, it's never going to beat his army. At this stage. It's, he's got too much supply now. So it's kind of over for the Hydra. The fact that he's dropping you is actually good for you. Because you just killed like 30 supply. And you lost barely anything. I mean that's nice. It, that, he helped you out a little bit right there. Uh, but I mean he also did that because he wanted to move his tanks. So now another base dies. So that's all. Then now at least he utilized that to a degree to make it good for him. Yeah. And now this forces you to take a fight with your units into tanks again. If you if you decide to be defensive here. And the same thing again. I imagine you're going to lose this fight, and you're going to have you know your whole army is going to be dead if you take the fight entirely. And he's going to still have like 150 supply. Would be my guess. You actually, so. Okay. I think I my pre -split maybe. You well, you won that fight because this dude does not <laughs> reinforce his army. <laughs> like okay, he's got units in front of his planetary at his fourth base. He's got units in front of his natural and may in third at his that at that area. He has like fifty or maybe not fifty, but he has like at least like thirty five supply. Literally sitting at his base again. And then he just threw away 30 supply with a drop. So, yeah. Like, he's definitely... This guy is isolating his tank area a lot. All he had to do was parade push you. All he had to do was do that. Um, but, yeah. Like, I mean... Thank God you broke it for you. That's like, it's just, it's a ch It creates a chance for you to, like, come back in the game. And what you should do now, because the Terran let that happen, is definitely re-expand again. Probably double expand if you can. And try to do something cost-efficient. Because if you just make Hydras again... Once again, you're falling into the same trap you were in before. Where if this guy just has his army grouped up, you're dead. Like, you're never going to win. Because, again, it requires... You would need the supply to be reversed for Hydras to work. You would need to be the one at 186 versus him at 132. I do like that you're building drones. There's no way around this. If you don't take a risk and build drones, you're going to lose no matter what. So that's an intelligent choice. But, I mean, you're so far behind already. And the fact that you're making a Greater Spire... It's intelligent. Should have happened maybe a little earlier, but it's still an intelligent choice. It's what you should be doing. Um, but yeah, if he pushes you, you should die because of how much, how behind you've been all game. Like, look at resources lost. You've lost 19,000. He's only lost 9,000. Like, you're definitely taking a super inefficient game here. And he's also, not only that, but look at income now. He's also been mining more than you. While you lose more, he mines more. I mean, that's a, like a double negative, right? So... You should eventually, eventually lose this game. Like it, this is a, if you win this game, it's because the Terran threw it really hard. <laughs> That's what it would mean. And then, yeah, like that. There you go. That, that's what I was looking at right there. <laughs> like that's what I'm more expecting. <laughs> Like, obviously, I think you move commanded there because you were trying to hit a tank in the back or something, but it doesn't matter. Like, this is what it will look like either way. If you fight and, like, look how much bigger his army is than it was before every time he pushed you. Like, if you, if you green box, like, half of this army, that's usually the size of his army when he was pushing you before. Like, it's, it's because he just kept leaving so much fucking supply at his base. He even still has a couple tanks and a little bit of bio, but at least now he only has... Uh, that's 8 supply out of bio and 6 supply in tanks. So he has 14 supply defending his base. Instead of like 35, 40, whatever. Uh, and now his push is actually, you know, we're talking like 100 supply. 100-ish supply push here. Which is very large looking. 
And, you know, when this shows up with your army, <laughs> your army is just going to melt. Yeah, even if you were not move command there, your army was going to melt pretty fast. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, now obviously the game is over. There's no way around it here. Because like, he's now... He, his army is still too big, and he has enough confidence to just keep walking forward. There's no reason why he's why he should stop. So you're inevitably going to die. Um, but yeah, I mean, long story short, things we've already said earlier in this game is you definitely just need to uh, um, make sure you're not falling into the trap of getting behind. For like many, the multiple reasons we talked about in the first Protoss game, it's still that even still applies to this matchup. The build order, basically, don't get yourself behind by build inefficiencies, and also really give yourself that scout when you need it at four minutes. And if you whatever re for whatever reason just don't know what he's doing, five minutes for us, and you'll be fine. Uh, one per base in the middle of the middle line, and you would be okay. And if you did that, you would have avoided this whole situation in the first place. And your quota for max should be roughly around 9 minutes. With mass hydras. If it's mass roaches, it should be even faster, like 8.30. And if you're not hitting those at all, if you're way behind, that's what's going to create all these problems for you like this. Alright, man. I would give you another example build, but it's literally going to be the exact same thing I gave you again. Because you're doing the BG, yeah, the B2 okay. gym style. So it's, yeah, it's, the same, it's literally the same thing. I mean, any okay, yeah, the example is the thing. It's the same except for the 17 hatch instead of the. Yeah, exactly. And then that's even if you were to go 16 hatch against Terran, it's so minor. Like it's fine. Yeah. Any uh, any uh, final questions about anything though uh, before we wrap up? Yeah, and maybe for um, against Terran, um, if they go bio, then the the carapace upgrade too. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Um, yeah. And uh, then, um, I was, was going to say, yeah, just get, I would say get weapon upgrade probably only against mech. And then, uh, yeah, bio definitely get double double evos for carapace as well. And for, for air upgrades, um, if I go into brute lords, I take all, um, always the, the carapace upgrades too. Yeah, yep. Always um, always go carapace when you go brute lord styles. Uh, you go only You only really want to go weapons if you go for like muta styles. But you're not doing those right now, so. Also against uh, Protoss? Maybe, um, or should I go there for... Yeah, you should go Carapace okay. against Protoss too. Okay. If you end up going Broodlords, because it makes... If the Protoss actually were to go to a stage where it's like, you're fighting maybe some carrier type stuff, like, Carapace is going to make your life a world easy... Like, worlds yeah. easier. Okay. Alright, man. Well, okay. dude. <clears throat> thank you for... Shout out to you and your, your buddy for doing a coaching lesson. Yeah. And, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you for uh, coaching me, <clears throat> and ho hopefully I can uh, get over to my plateau and platinum. So I, 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 I think if, honestly, if you if you can max out at the times that the quota is, I guarantee you'll get over your hump, because your games will just feel like you're just gonna roll your opponents over every time, because your your one biggest problem that was in both those games was your something inefficient was happening, and then you were always having equal or inferior supply counts, and that just makes Rochadra a thousand times harder. Like, you then have to do the shit we were talking about, where it's like, counterattack, tech switch into something better, do something more creative with your timings, and, you know, go from there. But realistically, all you gotta do, if you have a proper supply count, is literally, it's like having a hammer, you hit him over the head repeatedly, like, you can't have an economy, and I'm just gonna keep making this army, and keep throwing it at you, and you're gonna die. Like, it's all it is. If you have the proper build. Alright, dude. Good luck. Okay. Alright. And yeah, uh, thank thanks. you, man. And uh, I'll I'll yeah, I'll, s you. I'll see you around. Yeah, for sure. All right, take it easy, dude. And then have a great stream. Uh, great uh, stream. And yeah, see you around. All right, thanks, man. Bye. -bye. Take it easy. All right, guys. That has been a coaching lesson. All right, coach, coach. With I'm gonna say this wrong. I already know I am, but I'll try. The <laughs> Shogun. Yo, thank you, man. And uh, again, shout out to your buddy, uh, Mark and Thomas. Boys, much love. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this, if you found it informative, if you liked it, if you if you just want to watch more, 
I have more videos just like this all over my YouTube channel. I have replay analysis stuff. I have more coaching stuff. I have bronze to GM stuff. Lots of resources for you to learn StarCraft if you're interested. So go check them out if you want to do that. And I guess with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. So until then, take it easy. Watch love. Goodbye. Bye.